Left and meningeal disease, the basics. This video is intended for general information and should not be used as medical advice. I nor anyone associated with this page is a medical professional. You should seek guidance of a medical professional for any questions, symptoms, or other conditions you may have. The full medical disclaimer is at the end of this video. Leptomeningeal disease is also known as leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. I will call it LMD for short going forward. LMD in general terms is a complication where cancer cells spread to the lining of the brain, also called the meninges. The cancer cells float in the cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, that bathes the brain and spine. LMD is normally a complication of late stage cancer. This is called seeding or glazing. The glaze on an MRI looks like a thin, glowing coating, or as radiologists call it, an enhancement on the meninges, ventricles, spinal cord, and or nerve roots. As it grows, it can start forming thickenings or more solid masses of tumors. Unlike traditional cancer that forms tumors, LMD does not need to form solid tumors to grow. The CSF is a nutrient-rich environment which allows the cells to float freely and spread. With the advances in treatments today, people are surviving longer with cancer, and while these treatments are effective, they may not kill every cancer cell. Because of this, LMD is on the rise and can form months or even years later. There are three cancers that most commonly can turn into LMD, breast cancers, lung cancers, and melanoma. However, other cancers can also migrate into the CSF and are becoming more prevalent as well. Once cancer cells get into the CSF, they can seed anywhere in the brain or spinal canal making it harder to treat because you can treat the brain but still have cancer cells in the spine. Lepto means thin or fine. Meningeal means the meninges of the brain. So as cancer cells spread, they coat the meninges within the brain. The meninges are the three membranes that line the inside of the skull, whose primary function is to protect the central nervous system. The three layers are called the dura mater, arachnoid mater, and pia mater. The images here show you layers and general anatomy of the brain. LMD can present different symptoms for each patient with different severities. While one patient may have no symptoms or only one or two, another may have many. The severity can depend on where and how advanced the LMD is. Symptoms can include radiculopathies, cranial nerve palsies, inflammation to the brain, increased cranial pressure or hydrocephalus, and stroke. Radiculopathy is not specifically an LMD symptom. Radiculopathy is when one or more nerves exiting the spinal canal do not work properly and cause weakness, numbness, and or difficulty controlling a specific muscle. Keep in mind, many people have radiculopathy due to arthritis, spine injuries, or other medical conditions. As LMD coats the nerve roots or causes compression in the spinal canal, it can cause the nerves or spine not to signal correctly, thus not function correctly. This can lead to weakness or an electrical sensation in a limb or even loss of function to a limb or limbs. This can affect the arms, legs, bladder, bowel, or anything the nerves from the spine may control. These images are of an MRI of the lumbar spine, which is the lower back. The image on the left is with contrast showing areas of thickening where the LMD is impeding on the nerve roots and canal. The image on the right is without contrast. This could lead to loss of bladder or bowel function. In localized thickenings, oncologists will often recommend radiation if other treatments fail to work. Cranial nerve palsy is another common symptom. There are 12 cranial nerves in your brain. Each of the nerves controls various functions, primarily within your head and neck. If LMD coats the cranial nerves, the nerve may not function properly. LMD may affect none, one, or several nerves. This can lead to changes in smell, taste, hearing, vision, swallowing, talking, facial drooping, and or loss of control or use of the eyelid or lip just as examples. 
As an example, this image shows the facial cranial nerve called the trimedial nerve that leads to the various areas of the face. When this nerve is damaged or coated, it can cause facial twitching or drooping, which resembles Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy is paralysis of the facial nerve, causing muscular weakness in one side of the face. And while Bell's palsy is relatively benign and treatable, facial drooping in LMD patients can be a sign of disease spreading. If you previously have had cancer and you develop a new or worsening cranial nerve symptom, you may need to seek advice from your oncologist as soon as possible. Increased cranial pressure from LMD can be caused by several things. The increased pressure is often due to the LMD coating the pathways that allow the CSF to absorb into the tissue. As such, the CSF stays in the brain, increasing the pressure within the brain. LMD also can create thickenings in specific areas that look more like solid tumors. These thickenings can further block the exit of fluid, causing increased pressure as well. Increased cranial pressure can cause headaches, seizures, nausea, vomiting, along with agitation and or delirium and loss of consciousness. A stroke can occur when the LMD thickens on the nerve and compresses a nearby blood vessel, in essence causing a stroke, with stroke-like symptoms. How is LMD diagnosed? It is diagnosed by one or a combination of the following. Again, millennium enhanced MRI, lumbar puncture, symptoms, and occasionally a flow study to check for the CSF flow and obstructions. It's important to remember that a brain tumor or brain metastases is not necessarily LMD. Prognosis. There currently is no cure for LMD. The length of a patient's survival can depend on several factors, such as when it's diagnosed, a KPS score, which quantifies a cancer patient's general well-being and activities of daily life, age, Younger patients do tend to respond better to some treatments. The extent of your cancer systemically. Available treatment options for your specific cancer. And treatments you have previously received may also impact what treatments you can do in the future. Another factor that is not frequently discussed is the facility itself in which you're seeking treatment. Some facilities are better equipped, staffed, and knowledgeable of LMD than other facilities. However, as I've stated above, there is currently no cure, so it is terminal. And there are people who have lived for many years, but that percentage is very low. Most people who have LMD live on average with treatment six to 12 months, or maybe a few more. Without any treatment of disease, it progresses rapidly, and the patient can expect to live two to eight weeks. However, I would like to emphasize no patient is a statistic. What to do if you have new symptoms? If you are being treated or have previously been treated for cancer, especially lung, breast, or melanoma, see your oncologist as soon as possible for testing. If you have no prior cancer diagnosis, your symptoms may be due to newly developing cancer or your symptoms could be from another condition unrelated to cancer, but you need to be proactive. Research new drugs and treatment options. Ask every question you can of your oncologist seek a second opinion if needed, research clinical trials, and plan to make the most of each day. You also will probably need to prepare any medical or legal documents for the future. Our mission for starting this channel is to spread awareness, provide information based on medical articles, research, journals, and our own personal experience with this disease. Our goal is to empower patients and caregivers to ask the questions of their medical providers and research treatment options. Also to encourage medical professionals to not only treat the original cancer, but to help prevent and cure LMD and to provide honest feedback and information.